Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of The Citadel. Now, I bet you are wondering what exactly this project is about and I'm really eager to give you some answers to that. So, first of all, <laughs> the city is going to be massive. It's going to be a truly gargantuous project and uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit afraid about the size of it, but also very excited. The city is going to be a mix between cyberpunk, Blade Runner, Altered Carbon, but you will also see that it has been influenced strongly by Flux Trance's Avalon series and definitely um, City Walk City Wall's very recent and awesome Mars series. And this city basically picks up on the idea of a very brutalist, futuristic, money-driven city that exploits the poor for their work labor, while exposing the middle class to tons and tons of advertisement to try to suck out every little penny they earned working in the service sector. And in the meantime we obviously have the, the upper class the, that is wallowing in money, defending their power and suppressing the lower class. So basically like it is today on our planet. The big difference, however, is that we are not in our solar system anymore. We are in the Trappist solar system. More precisely, we are on Trappist 1e, which is located about 40 light years away from our planet, um, which is considered quite close in astronomical terms. But uh, please take this and the uh, following scientific fact with uh, a grain of salt, because I'm I'm not an astrophysicist and. I'm just working together with some very intelligent people over on my Discord server. And another thing is that very little is known about the Trappist solar system or Trappist 1e itself, so it's gonna involve a lot of speculation and just uh, some assumptions to produce this City Skyline series. I mean, in the end, it's, it's still a, a let's play for, for a video game and not a science channel. But please uh, feel free and head over to Discord if you have some valuable inputs. I'm uh, definitely not turning a blind eye to important scientific facts, but uh, on the other hand, I, I simply cannot implement all of, of the physical aspects to this project, because as I said, it's, it's still a game. Okay, so about Trappist 1e. The planet is in a tidal locked system or rotation, which basically means that one side of the planet is always facing the red dwarf sun, which is called Trappist-1 in this solar system, and the other side is always in, in the dark, basically like our moon. And this causes some very interesting phenomena, namely that it's pretty likely that there's a habitable belt around this planet, which is called the Terminator Line, where the temperatures may be suitable for liquid water to exist on the surface. This fact also implies that one side is always very hot and the other side is always very cold, which should result in pretty hefty storms from one side to the, to the other side, like it is uh, on planet Earth. Obviously assumed that there is even an atmosphere. Since the citadel is located between a, a mountain range, this shouldn't be too big of an issue because it's very well protected and we actually can make good use of, of these hefty storms to produce power for, for the city, what we will do in the future. So the last aspect I want to mention is something a member of my Discord pointed out, namely that the whole solar system is teensy tiny small, which means that being on Trappist-1 also means being very well into the gravity of, of the red dwarf star, and this means it's very difficult to get off and on this planet. But considering the story is set something like two to five hundred years after the first Mars colonies have been established, we're just gonna assume that the space industry made some giant leaps regarding ion engines and fusion power. But don't worry, the story is still in development over on Discord and uh, we are working on a cohesive backstory. Okay, so now on the screen is the empty citadel map I specifically made for this project. 
And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a pretty bland map. I, I didn't spend too much time detailing it because first of all, I will mostly play it by night. So you're not gonna see any details. And secondly, I don't wanna have any trees on this map every, anywhere. First of all, because of performance issues, and second of all, I think it adds to that alien-like uh, touch of the whole city. There are still some interesting features, like the mountain ridge uh, I mentioned before. Um, this one will provide some hydroelectric power from a crazy lake in, in, in the back there. And we also have two kind of islands uh, on the horizon where two massive bridges lead into the city. I'm gonna detail them very well and it's gonna look insane with the skyline in the back and these massive bridges in the front that lead all kind of traffic into the city. I also put together a custom theme with a theme mixer 2 mod and you will be able to download that one from the workshop if you want to play on this map with a similar color and theme settings. As you noticed, the, the light settings are very dim in on this map and the sun color is set to a kind of reddish color. The reason for that being the red dwarf star of the solar system provides only very dim light, so I guess this could be accurate, but um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Now, I don't really know what kind of City Skyline player you guys are, but I'm definitely one that sticks very, very long to one single project. I am building on Verville, which is my other series, for over a year now. And in my whole City Skylines career, which started in November 2018, don't ask me why I know this date, I only built like four cities if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, this is basically my fourth city. And there is actually a reason for that. I always struggle a lot with uh, starting a new city. I, I never know exactly where to start, how it should look like. I rather just play the game and, and adjust the city and the buildings and the infrastructure later on to, to fit the general style and look I want the city to have. But this uh, approach requires kind of a base infrastructure of a map and uh, this is uh, obviously not the case when you start a new map, it's completely empty and uh, that's uh, when I really lack inspiration and don't, need, don't really know where to start. So these clips now shown on the screen should be kind of an encouragement and motivational boost for all of you guys out there that suffer from the same problem like I do. Um, because I'm gonna delete almost everything you see right now on the screen. Yeah, there, there we go, we have some kind of an overview. And I completely deleted everything and started all over again for the third time already. But don't worry, this is actually not too bad of a thing because the more you try, the better you get and obviously I'm way more pleased with the latest attempt. So, as I said before, I'm not really the type of player that plans out every single detail for the city from the very beginning on. I rather go with the flow somehow and that's what I did here. I just started off with some basic road infrastructure. I built some kind of a ring road around the, the inner core of the city, which you already see is quite big. and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to show you every single detail I, I built here because I think road infrastructure is not too interesting to watch, and you will see see me in the future build tons and tons of intersections anyway. So um, I cut this out for for this first episode here, and now you see that I'm using the Caesar 
road networks and uh, <laughs> it wasn't uh, an easy decision um, to be honest uh, I I've, I tried out a lot of different road networks and all of them had so, some kind of issues especially with the intersection parts you know when you when you want to have a, a lane splitting off of the highway and stuff like that it, it it never really looks good except with these Caesar road networks I was also trying to the Shuto Expressways uh, networks and they are also very fantastic they they look really awesome and the intersection parts look not too bad as well but there is a, a big issue with them and they don't they don't have street lights for for some reason I don't know why that is um because you see me using network skins to mod over there reason for that being that I that I want to customize the networks exactly to to my own needs for example, I, I want to have some some uh, little light spots along these highway networks. I think they look really cool and really add to that futuristic vibe of, of the whole city. These light spots, I think, Armesto made them and somehow they are compatible with the Network Skins 2 mod, so you can even set them as street lights. So this is maybe useful to know for you guys if you plan a similar project, or uh, or I could also imagine you can set them along a footpathway, so you could basically have a light strip along along these uh, footpath or something like that. I, I think it's very versatile, just check them out. So you can see this interchange in the, in the center of this area there. And I really wanted to have this kind of massive interchange as the focal point of, of the start of, of the city. So I have something to show you from, from the beginning on. And later on I'm, I'm gonna add even more networks that, that kind of come together in, in this point, in this area. Uh, in the next episode we will have the suspended monorail hub. Uh, in, in this area so this will also add a lot and in general the whole highway infrastructure is strongly influenced by Tokyo I really love this uh, Shuto expressway that meanders around the city in between these valleys of concrete of the of the skyscrapers and all the buildings I, I really love that look and I tried to take this as an inspiration for the, for the highway infrastructure. I have to admit that this episode is kind of fragmented. Um, I'm sorry about that, but uh, please bear with me. It's only my second series I ever started on YouTube and actually my first voiceover ever. But uh, anyway, the footage is gonna make uh, much more sense in the future. I, I will pay a lot more attention to have these kind of finished projects I can do from episode to episode. But uh, for today we are just working on this random area in the middle of downtown i guess because the general plan was to was to finish up this area to to have this uh, awesome intro flyover you saw in the beginning of of the video i hope you're not too confused about uh, all these buildings just popping out out of nowhere it's not like these gonna stay exactly in in that position i will move them around a ton like i mentioned at the beginning i always improve and rearrange stuff and i, ju I just needed this kind of big city look right from the beginning on to <laughs> first of all get your viewer attention and uh, have something to show i guess you understand that and obviously also for the for the intro part as mentioned before so while I'm working on this sunken parking here with the glass cover, I want to briefly talk about an upload schedule of mine or the lack of one. It's always a bit difficult with us YouTubers, you know, just a very few of us can do this full time and so for me it's still a hobby and I can only spend so much time on doing this on, on, on YouTube. 
I still got my studies to do and I also have to keep my social life up and running. And I'm currently working on my bachelor thesis and all that stuff that's going on in the real life, you know. So please don't expect me to upload every single week or, or even every two weeks. I, I, I will try to upload at least once a month. But uh, you know how it is, uh, YouTubers and their promises regarding their upload schedule. And another thing, I, I realized it that especially with these voiceovers, I really have to do them when I totally feel like doing it, uh, as it should be with a hobby, because then it turns out much better than when I'm forcing myself to, to push out an episode. But I mean, I really lo love the thing I, I do here and uh, I don't think it's gonna change in the future, so don't worry about uh, the, the series is gonna be cancelled or, or stuff like that. It's, it's just gonna be a long-term project. I, I could see, see myself doing this also in a, in a couple of years, so I think the series is gonna go on for quite some time. Okay, that's uh, almost everything I got for you today. And again, I, I know this episode ha has been a little bit all over the place, but uh, it's, it's quite a steep learning curve, I guess. And uh, videos will, video quality will, will improve in the future, that's for sure. Especially when you leave your feedback in, in the comments below. I, I'm gonna read all of them and try to implement all your feedback. I think I'm just gonna wrap up things here. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you if you like the content. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. And uh, really looking forward to see you in the next one. Enjoy the cinematics and goodbye.